The last learning objective is to define nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio data types. If we recall the attribute tables that we uh, looked at, we saw different types of attributes. So plot size is a number, whereas the vegetation class is a word. Similarly, similarly in case of raster data set, the count is a number, whereas type is a word. And again, area is a number. And these represent different types of data um, that can be used to, to describe the attributes of ground surface. Um, we divide the data into two main uh, categories. One is the numerical data and the other one is the categorical data. Numerical data is where we use numbers and categorical data is where we use words. Um, so for example, age, weight, number of children, shoe size will be uh, numerical data, whereas eye color, gender, blood type, and ethnicity um, are categorical data sets. Um, now, not all numbers are the same. Age and number of children are not the same. Age can, can be one and one and a half year, whereas number of children can only be one or two. So based on that, we can further subcategorize numerical data into continuous and discrete. The continuous is also called ratio, and discrete is also called interval. And continuous data is age, weight, blood pressure. These are the numbers that can have fractions, and so division operation is allowed. The discrete or interval numbers are where division is not allowed, but addition can be done. So number of children, um, you can add number of children, but you cannot divide children. Um, on the categorical side, we have two uh, further subdivisions. So these are based upon the ability to order the words or not. If these words can be ordered, then they are called ordinal data. For example, uh, if we were looking at the severity of pain um, or uh, intensity of um, um, damage, these are words, but they can be ordered from high to low. Um, and so those kind of categorical uh, data are called ordinal uh, values. Likewise, there are other uh, categorical data that cannot be ordered, and these are called nominal value, uh, data. Um, and for example, the eye color. We don't know if one color is bigger than the other or um, towards the right of the other. So they, they, there's no order in eye color. Likewise, dog breeds. Um, we cannot really order them, so they're they fall in the nominal category. They are just names, but still it is a data type. So all in all, we have four types of data. Uh, nominal, which is just names. If we can have an order to those names, then they become ordinal data. If on top of the order, we can also add and subtract them, they become interval or discrete data. And on top of that, if we can also divide and multiply, then they become ratio or continuous data. And this is a increasing level of um, complexity of these data types. So if we look at the what what we can do with this data, so if we were just looking as what uh, some uh, some methods of analysis, then all of these data can be used to find the frequency. So how often a certain name occurs. Um, or how often a certain number occurs. That's totally fine. But if we were trying to find a mean value or what's the uh, 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 median or percentile, not mean, but median or percentile of uh, values, then names don't have an order, so there is no median. Um, but we can find um, median and percentile for ordinal data because we have an order and the higher level data sets. If we are trying to add or subtract, then ordinal data cannot be added or subtracted. It's just an order, but no addition. 
uh, two panes cannot be added, two intensities of pain. And so that is the only characteristic of interval and ratio data. And so based on that, we can uh, find the mean value, the standard deviation, uh, the standard error, error. And so these, if we are interested in mean, standard deviation, then we better be looking for interval or ratio type data. And if we are trying to do division, then only ratio data allows that. So the, this table hopefully um, tells you if you are running into attributes of the, of the real world, then you have to make sure that you identify the data type of various attributes and preemptively ensure that the appropriate data type is associated to different um, attributes so that when we perform analysis on these attributes, we can select the methods and operations um, that would work for those attributes. So finally, we will do an example. And this example will show how qualitative and quantitative data works when we are dealing with uh, analysis. So let's look at this uh, raster image. And suppose we are trying to reduce the spatial resolution of this raster, which means we are trying to increase the grid size. So this is a 4 by 4 matrix, and we are trying to make a 2 by 2 matrix, represent, matrix representation of this data. Here we have a quantitative data with numbers, and here we have a qualitative data with letters. So if this was ratio data, then the value here would be some representation of a combination of these values. So in case of ratio, um, if we have values everywhere, we can just add them and take their average. So 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 divided by 4, 1.75. This is a little tricky. There's a null value. And there are two ways to deal with this. We can ignore the null value, in which case we will just take the average of the remaining three values, which will be 2. Or we may not ignore the value. So in this example, we are ignoring the null value and so this will be true. Similarly, in the qualitative attributes, we apply the majority rule, which means what is the majority value in these cells, which is A. In this case, it will be B because it appears twice, and the remaining will be C and C. Now, if we were to not ignore the null values, then we have to take the null into a computation. So if this was a ratio type data and we were doing 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus null divided by 4, it will result in a null value. Uh, this should be, uh, yeah, this is fine. And similarly, in this case, all of the other values um, are the same, but this lower left uh, cell has a null. So when we are applying the majority rule here, the null will supersede any other majority. So this will result in a null value in this cell. 